I have to say, I love me some Zaylor Stout, okay? And Zaylor is back with us. He's been here before, um, but he has something very important that he wants to talk to us about, you know, about, as I mentioned earlier in the show, that that's taking place uh, in the, um, and affecting the LGBTQIA plus community. So if you all are ready, can I go ahead and introduce uh, Z, Zaylor, get him in? Uh, so we're on a first name basis now. I call him Z now yeah. and stuff like first that. First initial, like, just like the letter. Just, just, just like the letter? Oh, and <laughs> look, and tonight is RuPaul's Drag Race, but Q is not on there. I don't know why I have to say that. Okay, I don't know why I have to say that. But anyway, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Zaylor Stout serves as a fierce advocate on LGBTQIA plus issues. Through his law firm, Zaylor Stout and Associates, he has represented HIV uh, plus and transgender employees who were discriminated against at work. He also works with employers to help them foster inclusive workplaces on a proactive basis. Zaylor volunteers through the LGBTQ Law Clinic and serves on the board of Reclaim, an LG and LGBTQIA plus nonprofit and quorum. The Minnesota LGBTQIA plus allied, allied Chamber of Commerce as well. He also ran for city council in St. in St. Louis Park, where he championed the call for the passage of a gender inclusive policy to protect transgender and gender non-conforming youth in schools. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Zaylor Stout back to our stage, please. Hello, hello. Hey, Z. <laughs> welcome back, my friend. Welcome, welcome back. And thank you for chiming in. That, that's the first time a guest who was backstage chiming in and actually listening to the show. Like, Let me get on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's audience participation at its best. Absolutely, yes. as it should be. Well, yes. well, thank you. I, I also know, ladies and gentlemen, we, we do a lot of talking behind the scenes. We have an excellent, we have two producers that are just excellent. And and Z, you said something uh, in our chat backstage that you wanted to talk about when you came on before we got into our discussion. Um, you want to share that with us? Absolutely. Well, I love hearing the discussion you're having as it relates to LGBTQI plus parents, right? And so what I've, what I've tracked in regards to my research on this topic is... Um, the aspect and the element of that queer parents have to actually work to become parents, right? They don't act, you don't accidentally, there's no oops situation where you become a parent. You actually have to go through the process of IVF, or you have to go through the process of surrogacy, or you have to go through the process of adoption. And so the data that I found has been that, you know, parents have been that have been raised by LGBTQI plus parents um, are happier. Right. And part of it is because this, I, I think um, an easy way to be able to address it and analyze this is that you can't accidentally become a parent. Right. And you actually have to work and you have to put money into it. And so folks are more invested in regards to parenthood, I think, as it relates to that, as opposed to folks that can, you know, have a one night stand. And the next thing you know, the, the, the test is coming out positive as it relates to them being being becoming parents. And, and so that's just my little my, my little addendum and take on that. Well, you know, I appreciate it. Look, I'm passing the plate for Z too now, okay? Because he knows what he knows, okay? And it was but he said, no, he that said, he said he said. No, but mm -hmm. that, that 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 was a great point. So thank you, thank you for weighing in on that because that was a moment where you know um, I, I really had to stand my ground, and mm -hmm. in a way that I didn't want to push my family member away. Or go go really in on him, but the right. universe put it out there where I had ammunition. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. So he got my point. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, see, we yeah. were. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? Oh no no no! I was oh, okay. just saying that that I'm, I'm glad we have the strength to be able to hold it together because sometimes we just can't. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I wanted to rip my wig off my head and just go, oh, but wow. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You I had one did. on? I did that day. It's called a scully. Don't go there with me, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zaylor, in the last two years, there have been an explosion of anti-LGBTQI legislation introduced across the United States. Right. And a huge focus of that has been on trying to deny gender affirming care. Mm -hmm. So as lots of LGBTQI nonprofits are trying to recover from financial uh, lack of donations during mm -hmm. COVID, there's a group called the National Center for Public Policy Research that has been trying to get major companies to interfere 
with their employees is donations to some of these essential nonprofits that are trying to provide life saving care to vulnerable members of our community, like the Trevor Project, which is uh, an anti-suicide uh, crisis intervention organization, and SAGE, which advocates on behalf of LGBTQI elders, and GLAD, which is an LGBTQI media advocacy group. They're even trying to ban books that educate the world on the contributions made by our LGBTQI ancestors. We welcome you here to talk about this. Can you start off by telling us who is or what is this National Center for Public Policy? Well, it's an organization that is funded by conservative think tanks. And what they do is they try to go against woke corporations. And what that means is, is that they represent the interests of some shareholders. Um, there has to be a minimum number of shareholders or percentage of shares that they own. A lot of those end up being um, things like uh, mutual funds and things of that nature. And so what they do is, and they approach these companies and say, well, we've dug into, because this has to be publicly available because they're publicly traded companies, you know, what have you supported with your ph philanthropy? philanthropic dollars, right? And so they're always looking and digging for LGBTQI plus stuff and then coming against those organizations and saying things like, we're gonna make a splash at the next shareholders meeting unless you correspond with and comply with our demands, right? And uh, under the particular scenario that you're referencing, you know, some of those demands are crazy things like, you know, don't support organizations that have, that that support the mutilization of minors, right? And so, uh, strangely enough, I think, and I'm not hopefully I'm not giving them any tips in regards to how to address this, but you know they use such crazy inflammatory language that the organizations giving already complies with and addresses that they're not giving money to those types of organizations. Mm -hmm. And so, strangely enough, you know my book ended up on the list next to. Glad and the Trevor Project and things of that nature that um, Best Buy supported in 2019. And so it was interesting that they were pushing to, you know, get them to not support things like the Trevor Project, which has absolutely nothing to do but saving queer kids' lives, mm -hmm. right? Um, HRC was on the list. And, but one of the things that they said from their perspective was, well, you know, HRC is very politically, uh, you know, um, strong nationally, and we can't expect for Best Buy to, you know, not support HRC. They, they have too much political strength and capital. But, you know, how about you not support our gay history in 50 states, and then you not support, you know, the Trevor Project. So I, I, I'm i pretty sure for the first time, a, a, a queer history book uh, showed up in an SEC filing <laughs> where it's available for anybody to read and have access to. So and accessible by uh, YouTube. We are sharing a link in case anyone would like to buy your book and wish to support you. Yes, you. yes, 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 we are. Yes, we are. Thank you. That that was a mouthful. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. It's a lot. I'm so sorry. Zaylor, okay. is it is it an attempt then to utilize uh, intimidation, I think, to really kind of scare people away from certain things? And can you distinguish for me Mm -hmm. what some people may argue the difference between this tactic and people's response when say for instance other people support organizations that don't um like say for instance a hate like say for instance when chick-fil-a had decided you know that they that that being gay was uh, was an issue and people stopped supporting them or when people said that home depot uh didn't support people of color all kinds of things and people you know, were uh, persuaded to not necessarily support them. Can you distinguish that difference? Absolutely. And 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 the interesting thing is, is really this is uh, over the last two years. This is the second second Minnesota based headquartered multinational organization that's been that's been attacked. So think about Target. Remember, Target had this whole thing where, you know, they removed the pride displays at some stores or they moved the prize displays to the back. And then there was this whole, you know, hoopla in regards to, you know, whether Target doesn't support the community anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And my whole thing is, as an attorney and somebody that does investigations, you know, what's reported out in the press isn't necessarily always what the truth is. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And so, you know, I haven't had a chance, unfortunately, fingers crossed, maybe somebody at Target's listening in, right? Been able to dig into the details internally in regards to what, the, what decisions were made and why those decisions were made at Target. But the example that I think as an employment lawyer is, let's say somebody crazy came over and said that they were going to bomb Targets that had Pride displays and they were in Kansas City. So then Pride chooses to remove those Pride displays there because it's just too hot, too too much of a hot topic, hot button issue. And I already know that Target doesn't have pride displays in every location across the country. So they already have identified certain um, locations that have a either a, a larger percentage of queer folks there or there's an interest in regards to it. So I already know that they're not in the most conservative spaces uh, across the country. But let's say Target, that that was a scenario and Target then removes the displays, however, still allows to be able to purchase those items online. What the public is told is that Target doesn't support gay folks anymore, right? Even though what they were doing was trying to protect the lives and the livelihood of those folks that lived in that community where that particular threat was. So I always take those types of great things as a grain of with a grain of salt. And the exact same thing ended up being the case with in regards to this Best Buy situation. What was reported out was that Best Buy changed that they what they were doing, and these emails are 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 you know publicly available. Well, I read all of those emails. And, and and they didn't agree to anything that, that didn't indicate that they weren't supporting the community anymore. You know, um, my, my book stuff that they supported me was a one-time thing in 2019. And they, yet they're trying to have them, you know, demand that they provide proof that they're not supporting my book anymore. Well, it was a one-time thing, right? Uh, and, they're, and they're ready to support my Black History book when, it, when, when that one comes out, right? So, you know, that's the thing is that, I mean, number one, I think they just got lawyered under this circumstance that they thought that they were getting something that they weren't, they weren't getting. But then to broaden back out, Bobby, in regards to your question is there's a difference between individuals going out and boycotting organizations that they don't support, mm -hmm. right? So that, that reminds me of the Chick-fil-A or the Hobby Lobby and things of that nature, where you have folks that are really cognizant of, of, of LGBT and QI plus issues and don't want to provide money that supports organizations that are giving money towards uh, folks that are vying against our interests, right? But there's a difference between that and using the corporate structure and in the stock shareholder kind of analysis and assessment in regards to then leveraging that strength internally within the organization to make those to, to force them to make those types of decisions right and that's where i think the difference is one is you know more populist and the other one is really taking a very strategic strategy and this is one of the things that i think is challenging with um, you know, the, the liberal wing of our party is that we don't spend a lot of money in regards to supporting think tanks that come up with these strategies and these ideas. The conservatives sure as hell do. Mm -hmm. And so then you have organizations like this that are doing these types of things, trying to trying to make a difference. But let me tell you, Best Buy supporting us more than ever, right? So I'm, I'm involved, I'm the DEI advisor to Twin Cities Pride and they were already supporting Pride and they're supporting Pride even more after this. So Best Buy is still there, they still support us. They're not changing anything that they're doing. Um, and so if there are LGBTQI plus organizations out there, there's a grant program in regards to stuff, um, in regards to, re re they really like supporting, you know, education and using technology for education. So if you're involved in regard to any of that, submit those, submit those grant monies those grant requests because there's money there for you Lovely. well please let me know because i have a talk show that i would love to put have best buy to support <laughs> i'm just going to tell you that, right? and, and it's, and we're, we're, we're a resource to the world um <laughs> z i want to first what keeps coming up in my head is is this legal for an employee to screen or prevent employees from donating to charities of their choice well, here's the thing. It absolutely is legal because, again, they're supporting um, a a conglomerate of shareholders. And I don't remember off the top of my head if it's a certain number of shares or a percentage of shares. Right. And so their whole thing is shareholders are focused about bottom line, about providing you know the highest capital possible, the highest revenue possible so that dividends can be paid out. And so their position is, you know, why are you giving money out in regards to these situations and these circumstances? Right. And if the economy gets tough, then it's like, you know, why are you spending money on these ancillary things when you should be focusing and spending your money on X, Y or Z? And so it is absolutely legal. Right. But the thing is, is like, you know, I, I, I don't recall there being situations and or circumstances where um, they're really using and leveraging this type of, you know, 
brute strength uh, at the shareholders um, kind of level and, and, to, and to present at a shareholders meeting uh, in regards to some of these social issues, right? Because it's really not a ton of money that they're paying out as it relates to everything else. Think about organizations like and corporations like this too, right? They get tax write-offs by donating to, uh, to to nonprofit organizations and things like that. So a lot of them have foundations where they're giving money out to these different aspects and areas. And so, um, you know, their whole thing is, you know, how, how does this support the education of folks within your demographic or the community? And so they just don't want it going towards LGBT organizations. And they're going to continue to push this, this aspect and this, um, this tactic against like, the organizations likely and who knows if the others are going to be as strong as best buy has been in regards to you know fighting against it wow. so have you experienced because you're in the article your book you are li are listed in it <laughs> have you experienced any fallout or any effects from this i haven't and strangely enough um it doesn't seem like the the reporting actually caught much much wind but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's not something that would have could happen later on you know sometimes you have reporting that happens and then for some reason two three years later it catches wind and then there you go um but um no i, I actually haven't and again you know they the focus was for them to support me in regards to when my first book came out and they were the first corporation to sponsor my book for a state which means they bought 150 copies of my book that got donated to lgbt nonprofits that work with kids Nice. And so, you know, they they were they were fired up about being the very first. And the fact that I'm here in Minneapolis, Minnesota was very impactful and important for me as well. So um yeah, no, it's it's it it, it there hasn't been any fall fallout or blowback. I mean, my, my book's already on the band list, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> well, we still want people to buy it. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Yes. Yes. You, you need to have it. Yes. Well, one of the things we take very seriously is trying to provide our listeners with tangible ways to to be activists and to be able to respond to various things. So I want to ask you whether it's on a larger scale or even in the place of a particular place of employment, if it's their own place of employment, how does the everyday person kind of counter, you know, the these types of um, actions against them? Well, I'd say, it's, I mean, say, stay, say, stay read up and informed in regards to what's going on. Um, you know, there's, there's always, there's so many different ways that folks can be involved. And a lot of people think that they, you know, if they're not at a parade or they're not at the legislature, then, then, then there's nothing for them to do, right? There's lots of things that they can do. So, for example, you know, they can go to their school boards, their local school board, and when people are fighting about not providing gender inclusion policies there for there to be kind of a, a structural way for them to address um, and handle scenarios where students are uh, either transgender, gender nonconforming, as opposed to teaching, treating each one that comes up as like a guinea pig, right? Having an actual policy and procedure in place and proper training for the staff at the schools. More often than not, the teachers want to be trained in regards to how to do this right and how to support the kids. But there's nobody there that has the expertise in regards to it. Mm -hmm. and and then the schools are provided the resources to be able to make that happen as well. So they can, you can go to your school board meeting and make an impact from that from that standpoint, especially now for some reason, because everybody's all of a sudden concerned about what kids are reading and stuff like that. And now they're going over trying to ban books and 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 things. You know, you can make a big difference by even lending your voice and showing up to those school board meetings and saying, no, not everybody in this community is against people having access to stuff and parents having access to books to be able to provide to their kids. Um, but you can also do things like, you know, buy a copy of my book and have it on your coffee table so that when family members come over, you can have a discussion. That just I just got a text from a friend where you know they had their boyfriend over and they and they thought they were gonna get some, but the but the boyfriend was so enthralled with my book that he couldn't put it down. You know what? You know what? You know what? <laughs> but 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 being the family show we are, we're not we're we're we're, we're not going to go there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I know what y'all talk about sometimes on the show. Tell you know, so, so what, Zaylor? What are you talking about? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Huh? You can also buy a copy. You can also buy a copy of the book and and donate it to your local library or yeah. your local high school. Where there, where you know there are queer kids, where they can have access to. And the thing that I love about the book, little quick little thingy. The reason why it highlights and uplifts the story of queer folks in each and every single state 
is because more often than not, LGBTQI plus folks, especially if they live in conservative areas, feel as though that they have to leave in order to be able to be in a community surrounded by folks that support and love them and that the laws are on their side, right? I wanted to be able to show those folks in Oklahoma City or in, in rural Iowa or Idaho or in North or South Dakota that there is history that comes from our community that are from their state. And if they stay there, they can become history makers themselves, right? And so that was that was an important thing for me because we've heard stories about Chicago and New York and Miami and Florida and all that kind of stuff. But you don't always hear about, you know, Des Moines, Iowa, right? Or all these things. And so it was important for me that folks were able to connect with stories that they could identify with because it's from folks within their community and maybe even folks that, that their families knew. Well, I'm gonna tell all of you, please get the book. Um, I have it in my living room, so it hasn't really kept things from happening in any other places of my house, but it is a beautiful book. Get it? Uh, here's the web, the link right here. Order the book. You will be glad you did. Zaylor, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for coming on with us again tonight. It is always a, a pleasure to have you here. And you know, outdoors are open here. And he said, he said, he said, and you can Absolutely. come back anytime. Just know that. Just know that. I'm sure okay. you want to have me back once we get some of those Supreme Court decisions out, right? So oh, as a legal expert. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Okay. 